Whenever someone mentions computer games, there is only one type of game that springs through my mind. Deep and complex at first sight. Strategy games are, in my opinion, the very definition of computer games. But I am not talking about strategy games like Farmville, but real titles like Panzer Corps. Game titles that at first sight you already know you'll be sinking in way too much time whether you'll enjoy it or not. But at least there are titles you can tell right away if you'd like them without even playing. Panzer Corps allows you to play any and all missions of either side of World War II. Well, as long as you have the proper DLC purchased. But the gameplay is pretty straightforward too. You have a turn-by-turn -turn strategy game set on an X-Grid, and you have a wide range of units with their strengths and weaknesses, and the terrain affects both the movement, the attack or defensive capacity. You'll have to complete a succession of scenarios in order to complete a campaign, but you do not always have to win, you'll be able to either complete a partial victory, or suffer a defeat and move forward with the appropriate bonus or malices applied from the previous experience. Additionally, all your units stick around with you for redeployment. So naturally, as they follow you, they'll gain experience or receive medals or even have heroes rising up in their commoner's rank, which all makes that specific unit much more potent and further more valuable to you, which also means much more likely do not be risked away. Although the gameplay is really quite simple, it sticks to its core mechanism for most of the playtime, or is still required to perform specific tasks from time to time in a specific order. For example, you might be required to destroy anti-aircraft guns prior to a certain turn to receive additional air units that will support an assault. Furthermore, we also have simply different objectives to complete, while most of the time it will simply consist of controlling important nodes before the end of the turn limit, and will also sometimes occasionally required to simply maintain the control during the enemy onslaught. And we truly have a wide range of units that will be at our disposal. We have ground units from the foot soldiers to the, the tank themselves, as the name implies. We also have airborne units from bombers to fighters. And we also have some ships and some mission that will be able to grant support. And each of these units will have a particular set of uh, stats allocated to them. And we can go really deep in the information to try and understand in which circumstance which unit will be most appropriate. But generally speaking, you could be able to tell right away what a unit is good for once you start playing around a little bit. There is also the reinforcement system that is quite interesting in this game. During your turn or before any deployment, you'll be able to decide your core units. You can either upgrade the ones you already have or repair them. For example, in the upgrades, you have, for example, foot soldiers. We can grant them mechanized transportation or we can replace them to a totally different type of units or we can just enroll brand new units and all of this is done through prestige that we gain in combat as we defeat the enemy and conquer objectives we'll gain more and more prestige which will allow us to better off our units or just resupply them additionally i spoke earlier to about the experience of the units when you do repair a unit or refill the ranks, you will lose some of that experience. But there is always an option at a higher cost of prestige, you can reduce the impact of the repair, which can be sometimes used in critical situations to make sure you hold out a, a strong bottleneck against the enemy. The graphics though aren't the most elaborate things around town, we still have ample of details given by the sprite and the terrain tiles themselves are more than egregious to provide adequate information at first sight without having to rely on tooltips. But the tooltips are still present and extremely helpful for first few missions to get going the proper way. The music is nice and panzer 
but hasn't really triggered my attention for so much and will definitely not be a random tune I'll be humming in a few decades, it still sets the proper mood for World War II game. The sound effects do get repetitive and I had a few instants where the sound seems to become completely mute out of nowhere. A quick search though shows up that it doesn't appear to be a common issue so it might simply be a configuration problem with my system, but it is an irritating annoyance more than anything important. There is also a small part of the campaign that is voiced before starting a mission will have a narrator reading out loud in a strong Germanic accent to us a briefing. But outside this, there isn't much voice acting throughout the game. While Panzer Corps is kind of a recent game, it's still able to recover the essence of long lost titles. It's not perfect and definitely not the most affordable title when you factor in the price of the shovel load of DLCs but it's still a game that can absorb you to the fullest for many hours and stays engaging and compelling enough for you to bring it to the end of its experience. I honestly rarely find time to play games more than a dozen or so hours nowadays, but Panzer Core was able to indulge me into draining way more time than I should have. And that is why, if you have an interest in tactical games, Panzer Corps is still a great choice to fill the gap before Panzer Corps 2 that was announced. you've enjoyed this review and if you did make sure to subscribe for more thanks for watching and see you next time